Welcome back after the break. Uh, thank you for, for, for logging in after the break. Uh, so before we went for our break, we were, uh, we were on page number uh, you know, 138, where we saw that not every closed door uh, is a no from God. Okay, so some doors, uh, you know, are shut because of Satan, uh, it's shut because of um, uh, of people, but not every door that is closed is a no from God. We need to press in, we need to take hold of what God wants for our lives. And not every delay is denial from God. Even as we go to the Kronos moments, the Kronos seasons in our lives, you know, there will be delays, but not every delay is a denial from God. God, we need to understand this that you know sometimes God is taking us to the preparation process, it's taking us longer. Uh, so, for example, when we look at Joseph's life, you know, when he was a young boy, when he was a teenager, you know, God um actually um, you know, we, we see that God revealing into to him his plan and purpose for his life when he was a young boy, teenager, 15 years old. But it actually took him almost 30 years to see that. To come to the Kairos moment. So between that, the time when God, you know, revealed His plan and purpose to the Kairos moment, we see that He goes through this Kronos moments where times where you know He, he was sold as a slave, uh, He was tempted by Potiphar's wife, He was thrown into prison, and um, you know we see that there were delays from God. Okay, but all of these delays were not denials of. God. It was not denying the fact that God had given him a dream and that he's going to fulfill his purpose. But why was this delays in Joseph's life? If you read uh, Psalms 105 verses 17 to 22 on page number 140, uh, we see how beautifully it is said there. In verse uh, 19, it says, until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. So why did why was there delay in in Joseph's life? Because God was testing him, testing him through all of these being sold as a slave, being tempted by in Potiphar's house, by Potiphar's wife, being thrown into prison. All of these were uh, the delays, and these delays in the Chronos time or the Chronos season was because God was basically testing him okay i was getting him ready for his life assignment and then we see you know after 30 years we see his dream fulfilled when he becomes the um next to uh, the pharaoh he becomes the prime minister of the whole of uh egypt okay so we need to understand um uh, you know, when we're looking at uh, studying God in the way that he's working to circumstances and situations, we need to be careful to not to interpret God's delays as denials. But not, it, we need to see as these delays as God, what are you working in my life? What are you trying to teach me? Areas that you're testing me. What do you want me to do? How do you want me to correct my self okay and also when god is orchestrating situations in our life you know uh, we need to uh, be careful not to push open the doors that he closes there are some doors that god closes you know we should be we should be uh, sensitive in the spirit to know that it's not the right door and he's closed it uh, we don't accept every denial also as a delay from God. We need to stand through time. We need to go through the preparation time that God is taking uh, us through. And also there are times when, you know, um, uh, you know, when uh, we don't in study too much into what God is doing. Okay, maybe if God is closing all the doors and we can't say, oh, there's a generation curse, then I have to fast and pray, I have to call people, I have to do this, I have to do that. No, you know, don't get too over-spiritualized things, don't get too uh, overly, overly spiritual, uh, just try to understand what the Holy Spirit is leading you and guiding you and telling you to do, okay? On page number 141, 142, 143, our, uh, you know, God, uh, pastor has shared, uh, you know, various examples in his life, how God orchestrated situations and circumstances. I'm just going to share one because in one of these, I am there. So I will just share that, you know, uh, uh, in, in um, uh, you know, in, I think in 2007 or 2008, when um, uh, the owner of the Ryan International Group of Schools, you know, Mr. Pinto called up pastor and said, you know, since you all are having your North Church at Ryan International School, Yalahanka, why don't, um, 
you know, you uh, come and teach scripture to our students. And the pastor was very excited. He said yes, but he did not know who's going to do it. How is, you know, we're going to get this done. And just then, you know, uh, I had applied to All People's Church. And I, I shared with you, right, a couple of weeks back, how, you know, this position was not put on the website, in the APC website, but how God was just, speaking to me and you know guiding me and telling me you know apply apply and when i went for the interview you know they had this uh, position open and i took it over and how we started ministering in 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 ryan schools and also in the other schools here in bangalore city and it gave rise to apc school outreach ministry which is called catalyst so you see how god orchestrated situations you know the owner called a pastor he said why don't you have scripture classes there was no one but how god you know orchestrated situations he brought me there and we started catalyst okay so this is how god orchestrates situations in our life and what we need to do when we see close doors uh what what we need to do when we see delays uh, how we need to stay and you know work on what god is working in and through us be patient and at the kairos moment god would give birth to the things that he has planned and purpose for our lives okay any questions anyone has in this chapter yes You want to use the mic because then other students will also hear you. Is this uh, okay? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, we talked about like uh, Cairo, Chronos uh, time, how uh, it happened in the life of uh, Joseph and life of. Uh, David, but uh, if we see, uh, is it also the same uh, in the life of Samuel? Because Samuel, from starting, also he used to hear the voice of God. Yes, in everybody's life, there will be the Chronos moments and there will be the Kairos moments. Yes, everybody's all of our lives. There will be a time when God will tell us, He will plan us, prepare us, depending on how yielded, submitted we are, how willing we are to listen, to correct ourselves, to journey along with God, to align our will to God's will. It takes that much more time in the Kronos moment before we see the Kairos time, the Kairos moment. Yes. Thank you. Anyone else has any questions? Yeah. No, you need to speak because the students need to hear that. How can we figure it out? This not every closed door is a no, and pushing open closed doors and standing through the delays. Good question. He is asking, uh, how do we discern which door is closed by God and which door is actually what God wants us to step in, but um, you know is um, uh, is 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 coming closed. Uh, so you know, basically. When we see closed doors, we need to go and ask God. God, you know, I'm facing this closed door here. What are you trying to tell me? See? And then if you have a peace in your heart, to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, to the voice of the Holy Spirit, to Scripture, God can lead you and tell you, this is not what where you know I want you to go or leading you somewhere else. He'll show you. When you make peace in your heart, you know this is the right door that he has closed. But if there is um, if there is a restlessness and you sense that, you know, it, it, everything seemed fine in that, and then you're just pressing and say, God, is it because uh, of some sin in my life, or is it because something that I have done, or uh, is it something because Satan is doing, or it's because of uh, of man? Show me, God can reveal that to you the holy spirit can reveal to you to the inner voice the inner witness through scripture and then you take the decision and lead you okay but if god is constantly even into dreams and visions showing you that door you know maybe he can show you that door is closed but it's open then you know that you need to press it you need to take but if you god is showing you that door is closed and it's something that you don't want to the sun will show you some way he'll show you that it's not something that he wants you to press in because maybe you think, okay, that's the right thing. That's the right person for me. That's the right person. That's the right church or that's the right place I need to go. And God is shutting every door. Then 
you know, you can ask God and God will reveal that. Yes. He's a God who reveals every step of the way. Yes. Good question. Okay, so Shiv Kumar's question is, ma'am, during New Year meeting, to know the promise of God for that year, churches pick up cards with God's promises and commandments. Is the right way to know? Uh, I don't think that's the right way to know. Uh, that is just basically to encourage you, uh, you know. But that does not hold uh, fast for your every area of your life uh, throughout the year. Uh, you know what is the question that uh, Shiv Kumar was asking? You know, the you in some churches in the New Year's um, day they send those promise cards. You pick it up, you pray, you close your eyes, you pick it up. It's uh, such great holiness, and you're so excited to read it. Command for you to obey the promise. Um, he's asking, uh, is it the right way to know? And I'm back. So, uh, yeah, we were answering Shiv Kumar's question. And in the overall picture and the framework of our lives, those promises and commands can help. But, um, you know, in the specifics, we need to still ask God for his guidance and for his leading. Yes. Uh, someone, there was, I think, a question from Nina John. Nina, you also had a question. And there was one more question from someone else. Can you please post your question again? Is that okay with you all? Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, any more questions? Anyone has some good questions? Yes, Rin. Yes. Um, from a book that I read, uh, there was a guy, uh, he's a missionary, and um, if God told him something, he always asked for a confirmation, like from someone to tell him that uh, it was from God someone to tell uh, who um, did not know anything about him or something. He always seek, uh, sought for confirmation from people. And as for here in Gideon, he um, also asked for confirmation through the fleece. So uh, what type of confirmations can we ask God? Yeah, so good question. Uh, you know, sometimes God leads us uh, through the primary ways. He guides us. Okay, so Rin's question is, uh, he, she, in a book she read about a missionary who, you know, when God asked him to do something, he would constantly, uh, you know, ask other people to, uh, if, you know, that was what God wants him to do. Uh, so uh, she's connecting it with Gideon and the fleas. Now, um, you know, uh, God leads us to three primary ways. His word, inner witness of the Holy Spirit, inner voice of the Holy Spirit. But he can also reveal things to us through the uh, eight different other ways that we had studied. Okay, dreams and visions, the gifts of the Spirit that is through prophecy. But whatever we receive through or, uh, you know, through time, seasons, orchestrating of uh, situations and events in our life, but whatever we receive through the other eight ways, you know, what we studied, you know, angels or even godly counsel. So what basically he's asking is not a fleece like Gideon asked. He's asking godly counsel. So we can ask godly godly people. We can ask them counsel or we can also depend on the gifts of the Holy Spirit through other people, through prophecy. But we will always need to go back to see if it's aligning with God's uh, word through the three primary ways and asking for the Holy Spirit, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit and also to the voice of the Holy Spirit. But what I think is, you know, we are such privileged people that we have the Holy Spirit in our lives and we have the word of God. We really don't have to run from pillar to post. You know, we can just depend on God's word. If we believe God's word is the truth and God speaks through his word, we will just hold fast. God comes through through his word. If we believe that the Holy Spirit is in our life, he's there to teach us and guide us and counsel us. We don't need anyone else. We just have these three great uh, witnesses, why do we need anything more? Why do we need four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven to confuse our minds when God has given us the best already? Right? Yes. Uh, are you able to understand that? When God has already given to us the best, why do we need other things? It's basically because we are not training ourselves to discern from God's word and to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit and the voice that we have to run to X, Y, Z. See? And God is not going to reveal sometimes. He says, I want you to learn. You learn how to listen to me because I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to one who's revealing it to you. Just as I'm revealing it to that person, I'll reveal it to you. You learn. 
So it's a good learning experience and it delays the Kairos moment. Because God is saying, hey, before you reach that Kairos moment, you know, I want you to learn to listen to me first. So listen. See? Good question. Uh, so Nina George's question, John's question is, uh, before the miracle at Cana, Jesus said to his mother that his hour had not yet come. When John 2.11 says, these are the beginning of signs, manifest his glory, and the disciples believed in him. Yes. Uh, are you just the confirming what we are saying, or are you posing a question, Nina? Asking. Okay, so I just said that, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, yes, that was the beginning of uh, signs. Um, uh, actually, um, John uses the word signs. He uses the seven signs to point out that Jesus is the Messiah. So this is one of them, miracles. And uh, he's pointing out that, you know, Jesus, through this miracle, uh, is the Messiah is manifesting his glory. But the question that Rin asked was, uh, you know, when when Jesus told his mother, it's, my time is not yet come, and he goes ahead and he does that miracle, then why does he do it even after he says his time is not yet come? So I basically said that uh, it's in the context of uh, when Jesus says my time is not yet come, he's talking about the context of, you know, him dying on the cross uh, for our sins. He's not basically talking about it's not the time for him to do any miracles or to start his ministry. Is that clear? Did that help, Nina? Okay. Okay, any more questions? Good questions today. Thank you. Makes the class more interactive and lively. Any more questions? Yeah. Just, in, I'm thinking like uh, regarding that uh, when uh, Jesus tells like it's not my time is not as come can we also like uh take it he is telling referring to his marriage with the bride his his marriage with the bride his marriage to the bride uh mean to the church yeah yeah that's also not the kairos moment it's not yet come yes so like that will happen only after he dies on the cross yes. can we also consider like that like because it's wedding so maybe no in 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 this specific context when my time is not yet come he's talking about my time is not yet come to you know to become the messiah he came as the messiah uh to die for the sins of the whole world so he's talking about in that context there can be other time frames that god works in but this is not that time frame a good question any more questions Okay, if there's no more questions, we'll, we'll go to our last chapter. So you can tell your neighbor, be happy, it's the last chapter. <laughs> okay, but this is not the last book. We have one more, uh, we have one more big book to go through. Uh, so you have to wait patiently. Okay, so this is the last uh, lesson in uh, this chapter. So in this, uh, sorry, in this book, uh, Receiving God's Guidance. So we'll just put all of them together. We were looking at how God guides us and leads us. But the, what we need to do is God is willing to lead us and guide us every step of the way. What we need to do is on our part, we need to be humble. We need to be obedient. We need to align our will to God's will. And we need to follow his instructions. Okay. Uh, we see that God just does not give us uh, his plan and purpose for our lives and vanish from the scene. But Job chapter 33, verses 14 to 16, we are on page number 145 in your, uh, in your books. Uh, Job says, you know, uh, God may speak in one way or in the other. So God speaks not just through one way. He can speak in one way or through another way. He speaks in many different ways. And we looked at the many different ways God uh, speaks to us. We looked at 11 different ways God speaks to us. He speaks to us through his word, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, to dreams and visions, to prophecies, angels, godly counsel, uh, through a renewed mind, times and seasons, and through uh, circumstances which he divinely orchestrates. Okay, but you know, the first three that is the word of God, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit are primary ways that God reveals and guides us. 
okay and the other uh, eight ways are the other eight ways that i mentioned but the other eight ways are also ways that god guides us but we need to always go back to the primary way we need if we receive something from a prophecy from somebody we need to go back and see you know test it with god's word if uh, this is what god is telling us if this is what god has spoken to us okay so how do you know it's simple questions that you can ask page number 146 and 147 there are two questions that you can ask okay these are practical ways how to test if uh, this is what god is asking you to do the first question you ask is is what i feel led to do uh, what i what i'm feeling led to do is it aligned and in harmony with the word of god maybe you feel a leading somebody's telling you to do something but is it in alignment with god's word now if you don't find that specifically given in god's word you can ask yourself is it according to god's nature and the character of god so that's the first thing that you can do then the second thing you can ask the holy spirit to give you to an inner witness in your spirit and then also you can sense his peace when you sense his peace you 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 know know that it is an approval of from god it's the right thing for you to do okay second corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 says you know by the mouth of two or three witnesses okay so for every situation that we go through life we have to have two or three witnesses and it's just not written in god's word god has also given us the primary he's given us three witnesses right the word of god in the witness of the holy spirit voice of the holy spirit okay so he's already given us these three witnesses that can witness to us whether it's god leading us guiding us whether it is his plan and purpose for our uh, life okay so when you receive it you can thank god you know uh, for example if somebody says you know i receive a prophecy that god is telling you that you need to go to the us you're very excited you know the next moment you're getting your passport ready if you don't have your passport uh, you're trying to find finances and you're ready to go you know but it's just a prophecy you need to test it you need to ask god god this, this person prophesied over me that i'll go to the us so is this the right moment is this the right time do you want me to go you know you need to ask god and god will confirm it in a witness of the holy spirit in a voice or through his uh, word okay okay and um okay then we'll move on um uh, we are all learning so we will all make mistakes okay here the passage given is john chapter 10 where jesus says my sheep know my voice and they follow me but they will not follow a stranger's voice because they don't know his voice so sometimes we can make a mistake you know sometimes we can hear things we can think it's the holy spirit telling us but it can be satan because sometimes satan can also disguise himself like an angel of light he can also disguise himself as a as a voice of god okay sometimes it can be our our own voice from our own desires our own heart that is speaking it can also be the voices of the world so you know we need to train ourselves to discern to listen to god's voice because there's god's voice there's satan's voice there's the world's voice there is um, your own voice that is telling you to do things so you need to come to a place where you need to know and discern when you are tuned yourself to listen to the holy spirit you will know when the holy spirit is speaking when it's your own voice when it's the voice of the world or when it's satan telling uh, you but sometimes we can make mistakes you know what we can do when we learn mistakes you know we don't make excuses we don't um, say we are perfect other people are wrong satan tempted us satan told us we don't blame others we take the blame we learn we ask god for forgiveness and we move on and we know when we get back on course god is able to uh, help us move on okay uh, there's a very interesting passage in isaiah chapter 30 which is given on page number 149 isaiah chapter 30 it says that you know um, isaiah is telling the people hey you people you have not kept god's law you have not even followed god you don't even obey him you don't even obey his prophets and his teachers but in spite of you being rebellious and stubborn this is what god is going to do god is going to be your teacher look at uh, page number 149 
Isaiah chapter 30, in verse 21, it says, Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. So what is God saying? Hey, you people, in spite of you rejecting me, not obeying my prophets, you know, rejecting my laws, not obeying it, but yet I am going to be your teacher. Even though you're stubborn and arrogant, God is saying, you will have a voice. You will hear a voice saying, this is the way, go in it. This is not the way, don't go in it. Isn't that wonderful? That shows how loving a God we have. That in spite of us being rebellious and stubborn and arrogant, he's still willing to, uh, you know, uh, you know, guide us and lead us. We can hear a voice saying, this is the way go in it okay but what we need to do is we need to get back on course okay in chapter 2 we studied about david we saw in how different situations how david constantly inquired of the lord he walked in the wisdom of god he made choices that honors god okay but we also know that david made some wrong choices but when he made those wrong choices you know what he says god teach me your ways look at psalm chapter 25 verses 14 and 15, top of page number 151. He says, God, show me your ways, teach me your paths. Okay, so, um, you know, uh, even in verse in Psalm chapter 37, you know, uh, the psalmist is saying, you know, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord because he delights in his way. Did you know that God delights in the way that you're going? Did you, did you know that God takes delight even in the way that you're walking, the paths that you're taking, your journey through life? He delights in it. And because he delights in it, he is going to order your, not road. He's not going to order your journey or your road, every step. See, look at God's word. You know, he's ordering your every step. Okay. So every uh, journey in life he's ordering your every step and even as we go through this journey just like David we will make a lot of mistakes but we need to learn how to resist temptation how to crucify the flesh we need to uh, you know uh, we can make wrong choices we can make the wrong decisions but even though we make all of those things we don't cover up our sins we don't make excuses we don't blame others we don't think we are always right but we fix our eyes on God and when we come back to God when we align our will to God's will when we ask him for forgiveness God is greater than our mistakes you know he's bigger than our messes that we make uh, he will work out his plans and purposes for our lives he will bring us back he will realign our will to his will you know and um, you know he can restore all the years that have been wasted away you know and he's a great redeemer who can bring us back on track and who can fulfill his plan and purposes for our uh, lives okay but even as god you know leads us and guides us in our life there are times when we have to take risks like abraham you know abraham god told him go to this place which i am going to show you it was a risk okay he just stepped out by faith so sometimes God takes, asks us to take those risks, we just step out by faith. But there are times when, you know, we need to be very, very cautious. You know, we need to stop, wait. We need to ask God, God, you know, is this what you want me to go? This is a road you want me to take? This is a step you want me to take? And the beautiful thing is that, you know, as we journey in life, God makes our steps much more clearer and brighter. How do we know that? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, page number 153. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. It says, can somebody read that? Yeah, so you know, as God leads you, your ways become brighter and much more clearer. Okay, so God guides us by showing us his light. Also, sometimes there are seasons when, you know, you don't hear anything from God. You're wondering, you know, you've been doing this for a long time. You're not hearing anything from God. You're not, nothing new is coming. Nothing different is coming. You're asking God, but you don't hear, which means those are seasons where God is saying, hey, I just want you to be here. I want you to be, be faithful, sincere. I want you to be uh, consistent. I want you to press on. I want you to manifest my glory where I have placed you. But when time is there to move out, God will show you okay what you need to do and also you know when we are in seasons in life god wants us to be good 
stewards. He wants us to be faithful. He expects us to be trustworthy, dependable, someone he can count on, somebody is entrusted to us. We need to be good stewards. Okay. And then just a few more things. Avoid being self-driven and stubborn. Okay. While we are pursuing uh, God's guidance for our life, uh, there are times when, you know, we can... There are times when we can uh, do things out of our own self. We can say, okay, I know God's plan for my life. Okay, let me go. Start doing whatever I want. You can be motivated by yourself. Okay. Uh, but, you know, uh, those times you will find delays that are happening in your life. Okay. So don't be focused on your own selfish interests. Uh, you know, you need to listen to God, what he's telling you. Uh, sometimes you might be motivated to do things out of your own flesh, but you need to stop and ask God what he wants you to do. Okay. When we're self-driven, we are being stubborn and, you know, we want to have our own way. We think we are right. We know everything. We are very spiritual and all of those things. We're unwilling to learn from others. We're unwilling to receive from godly people. We are not teachable. Uh, we don't receive counsel from others. And that time, you know, those attitudes is going to delay what God wants us to do. He'll delay the kairos moments. Okay. So don't do anything out of spiritual pride. I know I am great. You know, I'm superior. I know everything. Uh, this is what happened to Moses. Moses thought, I've been trained as a, a prince. I know everything. I know how to uh, lead a nation. I can do everything. He took things into his hand and what happened? It delayed things by another 40 years. Okay. And we know that it was because of his stubbornness and stubbornness is a heart issue. Okay. Um, that is what we read in Exodus chapter 34 verse 9. You know, uh, uh, also we read in Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 16, where it says, you know, God is saying, Moses is telling the people circumcise your foreskin of your heart. So that you are not stiff-necked, so that you are not stubborn. He says, you know, in the verse six, uh, chapter uh, chapter ten of Deuteronomy, verse sixteen, in the easy to read version, it says, "Stop being stubborn. Give your hearts to God." Okay, so we need to come to a place where we are yielded, surrendered to God, uh, where we are giving Him, you know, access to our will. Uh, giving him right over our desires, our dreams, our, pl our plans. When we do that, we will be in a better position to receive God's guidance for our lives. Okay. And just a few more things before we close. Avoid being aimless. You know, God is giving you a plan and purpose. And, uh, you know, you are willing to surrender and yield, but you don't do anything about it. You just sit back and you're wanting God to do everything. No. Now, God has given you the plan and purpose. You need to plan, you know, bring about strategies, you know, prepare for things. And you must seek God's guidance and direction for your life, what he wants you to do next. But what he wants you to do is he wants you to work hard, plan, strategize, prepare for yourself. Okay. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3 and 9 on page number 156. Can somebody read that, please? Thank you. So we see here that God directs our steps. We need to depend on him every step of the way. Okay. Proverbs 21 verse 5. Somebody else can read. It says plans of the diligent surely will lead to plenty. Okay. But those of everyone who's hasty will surely lead to poverty. Okay. So even as God is guiding us uh, to fulfill his plan and purpose for our lives, you know, we need to work out God's plan uh, with diligence, with patience, with endurance, and we will see him lead us every step of the way. Okay. Just um, three more things. Avoid distractions. We know that distractions waste our time. Uh, takes away all our energy, uh, what we are supposed to be doing. So don't waste your time. You know, uh, even as you're waiting on God to bring you to the Kairos moment, you know, we should be active. 
we should make decisions you know we just can't sit back and uh, you know one got to move okay an example given here is when uh, abraham tells his um, servant to go and find a bride for isaac what does he do he doesn't just sit back and pray and say god show me a bride but he goes he takes a journey he travels but what does he pray he says god please what does he say he says you know lord lead me uh, as i was he says the lord led me as i was on my way so even as he was going on his way god orchestrated situations planned things for him led him and directed him but what did he need to do he had to go he had to plan he had to take the take up this uh, journey he had to ask god he had to wait upon god and he was ready to obey god and he acted on what god told him to do and we see that you know god um, helped him to find a bride for his uh, master's son so even as god is asking us to do various things in life we just don't sit back and not do anything but we need to be active and we need to make our own uh, the make the right decisions as god leads us and the last thing is you know don't look at your uh, past past failures past mistakes what you have done you know leave the past you know look ahead that's why paul says you know continue running my race fixing my eyes on jesus the author perfecter perfecter and the finisher of my race so continue running your race fixing your eyes on jesus don't look at the back there might have been failures there might have been mistakes um you know forget all of those things uh, forget all those disappointments those hurts don't keep them don't hold them because those are like baggages you know when you have a big baggage you can't walk freely ahead let go of everything just run your race and you know um, god has something great in the future for you things that you have never even thought of dreamt of seen uh, heard of are things that god has planned for you and he will guide you and lead you okay so that is the the last chapter in this book um we we'll look at uh, code of honor in the in in our next class okay uh, nina john says before we finish class could it be possible to know the answers for the fill in the blanks in the assessment okay the fill in the blanks for the assessments the answer is already given there uh, when when you go and you finish each question uh, nina the answers are already given there in the assessment i can't give you the answer because um, there are e learning students who start their courses late some of them have not arrived at this class so they will also know the answer for the assessment so i can't give you the answer for the assessment uh, but the answer for each and every question whether it's fill in the blanks multiple choice check boxes are all given in the assessment so once you finish your assessment you can uh, look at the answer it's all uh, available there okay okay thank you for the uh, joining class today sorry for all the inconvenience that happened um and uh, have a good weekend i'll see you uh, next week thank you so much Stop.